let's make a deal. You hand over that crystal and I won't toast your friends. No deals with double-crossing, bad bleach job nega trash like you. Get ready, the negaverse is dust. Empty threat, Sailor Moon. We wasted Queen Serenity and we'll do the same to you. How do you know about Queen Serenity, huh? Because I was there on that glorious day when we trashed the Moon Kingdom. And let me tell you something, Moon Brat. You got a lot to learn. You're no Queen Serenity. Liar. Moon Podcast Escalation! My name is Jordan D. White. My name is Chris Sims, and this is Sailor Business. It's the podcast where we sit down with a friend each and every week, most weeks, and watch an episode of the classic 1992 Sailor Moon anime to talk about just why it is that we like it so much. And folks, if this is your first episode, you're not going to have a good time. It's nobody's first episode, (laughs) is it? Listen, we appreciate you. We appreciate you giving us a shot. I'm just telling you right now, this is this is the one where it's picking up. <laughs> this is the next three episodes are the worst episodes to start with. So thank you. But maybe go back and listen to Horrible Future or Did You Hear What Happened to Tokyo Disney? <laughs> or one of those. Those are those are good. Try those out. Because this episode is the beginning of the end of Sailor Moon, season one. <laughs> <laughs> And it's not that great of an episode. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, we should probably save it for the end. But yes, I agree with you. It is not my favorite. Uh, but we are going to be watching episode 44 of Sailor Moon, which is Isagi's Awakening, a message from the distant past, where we will find out so much about the Moon Kingdom. And to help us out with that, we are welcoming back my good friend, uh, amazingly talented artist, amazingly talented person, Aaron Gladstone. Welcome back. Aaron, how are you tonight? I'm great. That intro made me feel really cool. You look, anyone can just go to your your Tumblr, your Twitter, uh eglads on both of those and see how amazingly talented you actually are. It is I am but a mirror reflecting. <laughs> I'm, I'm all about this. Yeah, I don't care how over the top it is. I'm like, I'm going to write this down in my journal. <laughs> Yay. Look, you know I'm a fan. You know I'm a fan. Aaron, you joined us for the show last week, and we talked about your history with Sailor Moon a little bit then. So if anyone uh, did not hear that one and they want to go back and hear more about you, check out last week's episode. And usually what we do on the weeks after we have introduced a new friend is we answer some Twitter questions. That's true. And we're going to do that now, too. <laughs> Here's a great Twitter question that is uh, intended for me, uh, but hopefully you'll have some insight as well. How would Usagi fare against the Leprechaun? Right, because you, (laughs) for reasons known only to yourself, (laughs) just recently uh, did a marathon watch of all of the Leprechaun movies. I mean, not a literal marathon. Like we, I didn't watch them all literally straight through. I watched them over the course of a weekend, over of like a long weekend, like four four days. Oh wow, that's sensible. Yeah, all seven seven movies in uh, in uh, four days. During it was during Comic Con too. It was during San Diego Comic Con when most people I knew were there. Not most people, but most of the industry was there, and I was at home tweeting about leprechauns. So you were like, okay, everyone is having a miserable weekend. How can <laughs> I screw up these next four days for myself? Oh, I know, <laughs> seven leprechauns and my wife. My wife four- watched all of them with me. Fourteen hours of leprechaun. Oh no 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 no! They're short. They're not two hours. They're not two hours. One and a half at most. Oh, isn't there that really good Leprechaun movie? I have never seen any of them, but I think there's the one where it's like in the hood or something. Yes, Leprechaun in the Hood this... is, is great. Yes. That is that is okay. That, one I of know the best. about that one. That's one of the two best for sure. Um, so how would Usagi fare against the Leprechaun? I think she would dust him. Like most people that fight the Leprechaun in these movies don't have magical powers, so she's got it up uh, on on them. And also, I don't know. I mean, sure, Usagi would like gold. But I feel like she she's not going to be as tempted by gold as the typical greedy leprechaun people, right? Yeah, I, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like she would be very tempted by, by jewelry. Mm. 
That's true. I mean, it's mostly gold coins, though. Okay, fair. I mean, so, look, look, the, the Sakino family has a pretty nice house, so. <laughs> well, I'll tell you the real risk, because the, the person who asked this was uh, Michael Scally, and he points out uh, that Leprechaun does have a thing for space princesses. There is an episode where he tries to marry a space princess. The The problem that Usagi would have is uh, revealed in the second film, the way that the Leprechaun tricks people into marrying him, tricks women into marrying him, is he just kind of declares that that's the woman he wants to marry. And if she sneezes three times without anyone saying, God bless you, then he gets to marry her. Wow. (laughs) So I feel like she might have that problem. She might sneeze three times and then have to marry him. Okay. Interesting. All right. We've got some other questions. We've got some other questions. Here's a quick one, uh, because it's a little bit more of a joke than a question, but I think I'm going to ask it anyway. If there was a Sailor Moon Ninja Turtles crossover, would Luna try to eat Splinter? Ooh, see, that's a good question, because... Luna is a cat who might be a people, and Splinter is a rat who might be a people. He's so much bigger than her. If she jumped at him, he would smack her down immediately. (laughs) Well, I mean, look, Luna would not successfully eat Splinter. Splinter (laughs) is five feet tall. Right. So no. So no. Oh, we actually just got a ton of questions live on the air. Well, at least we got a few. Oh, good, good. I don't know. I can't vouch for the quality. I have not pre-read them. Here we go. Uh, Chris, what is each scout's favorite Common Rider series? <laughs> uh, obviously, they would all like Common Rider Forze because they are all into the power of friendship and space, which is the central theme of Forze. Uh, except for Ray, Ray would probably like like the original series that's just about throwing monsters off cliffs. Uh, here's one that's for all of us, uh, Aaron. I'll, I'll let you take lead on this. What are your thoughts on peanut butter? Oh, pretty darn positively. I mean. You can make cookies with it and sandwiches and also have it in entrees. Peanut butter is pretty rad. Peanut butter cookies are probably my favorite kind of cookie. Really? Yeah. Like, the, butter, like I mean, peanut butter cookies are my favorite kind of cookie, but I am extremely pro peanut butter. Yeah, the ones, the kind that has like the little squares on the top. I love them. The, the international sign for peanut butter cookie squares on top. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well it, well, it is. It's got you. Oh. Got, you you press it with the forks. Like, yeah, I mean, it is. Like that is one hundred percent true. <laughs> uh, Actually, I'm really curious. Like, is that how they denote peanut butter cookies in other? Like, I know that that's America. I don't like know that in other countries too. I feel like it's like chocolates. Like there are certain shapes that are universal for like when you get a box of chocolates. Like, oh, that one's round so it's marzipan and that one's square with wavy lines so that's peanut butter and that one's garbage because it's coconut (laughs) but like uh and and those are supposed to be standardized across all the different chocolate companies so i feel like i have never seen a non-peanut butter cookie that had the squares on top so write in let us know (laughs) yeah i'm really curious for sailor baking our new podcast (laughs) Uh, Uh, i would definitely be a part of that (laughs) yeah i think sailor moon would like peanut butter Say that Sailor Moon had a Batman the Animated Series style opening, what would it show? I mean, I mean it kind of does. That's exactly what I was going to say. It does. It has a very artsy opening. in the opening of Sailor Moon. Yeah. I wrote a piece a while back about the, the Batman the Animated Series opening. In 57 seconds, you learn everything you need to know about Batman yeah. in that opening. Uh, if you really break it down and pay attention to what is happening. Uh, I don't think the Sailor Moon opening is that good. But the the one that we have now, like where we're at in the series towards the end of of Sailor Moon Season 1, is actually a really, really good opening sequence, I think. It's beautiful, but it's also Mm -hmm. fairly nonsensical. Do you not agree? I'll cop to that. Yeah. But, Uh, I mean, you know, it has the Moon Kingdom getting destroyed. It's got the girls turning into scouts. And it has Tuxedo Mask riding a horse across the sky. Yeah, obviously. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. It's the most important part of Sailor Moon. (laughs) Right. Okay. All right. (laughs) Hey, the Sailor Scouts are thrown into the world of Mad Max. Who drives the war rig and what children's toy do they worship? (laughs) That's a very ridiculous (laughs) question. That's a great question. (laughs) That is a really really great question. Well, Jupiter's the toughest, so she would probably be the the war rig driver. Yeah, I'll buy that. Yeah. Well, Uh, I could maybe see that. I don't know. I don't know if toughest is maybe the defining characteristic of what makes her the war rig driver though if, if we're including outer senshi then it's definitely uranus driving the war rig yeah well because she's a she's a racer yeah well she, uh, well she might be the mad max oh that's true of the, she might be the the top pursuit person uh from the uh, the original mad max the road warrior uh the, the splendid minako <laughs> <laughs> 
would be all about all of that. I think they would obviously worship Luna. <laughs> Yay! I like it. Yeah. Talking cat? Absolutely. In that world, a talking cat shows yeah. up in that world, absolutely lives like a god. Do not grow dependent on water, Serena. <laughs> you will miss it in its absence. <laughs> awesome. That's amazing. Here's another. Since Sailor Venus was in England, what other cities could you see other sa- sailors fighting crime slash negaverse across the world? Oh, Atlanta. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Which scout goes to Atlanta, you think? Jupiter. Of course. <laughs> Jupiter goes to Atlanta in the early 90s to uh, wrestle Dusty Rhodes at the Omni. <laughs> for That's a very Island. specific. <laughs> like, it does not get more Southern than that. That's the, I, I I mean I feel like I, after that I might as well answer like Sailor Moon goes to Naugatuck, Connecticut in the nineties and goes to prom with me like what? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sailor Mercury comes to South Carolina. And we have a study date for the SATs. <laughs> well, but I thought she didn't like boys. Uh, no, uh, no, I mean look, I we could just be friends. Oh, it's so like a actually yeah. legit study date. Okay, sorry actual study date yeah uh, but but let's see in real life uh i don't know what sailor scout in real be, life in real life <laughs> what, what sailor scout sure would be good in new york life. i don't know i'm trying to decide who i, I mean I'm, i feel like it's gonna end up being like ray should go to new york because she's a jerk like every new york person but i don't want that yeah, yeah, because because she's got she's got like i don't know i could see her maybe there only because i feel like in, constantly in the series or not constantly but they show her as wanting to kind of be famous sure. but loosely famous like she's like i'll be a singer maybe i'll be an actress she just wants to be famous right so maybe i think she would go to new york and just try to find out what kind of famous she could be whereas venus should go to la oh definitely oh my god venus would totally audition on american idol (laughs) yep every season i would genuinely love to see like a a world tour arc with the the sailor senshi because i like i am a sucker for that in all kinds of superhero media like any time that you know the batman incorporated thing where batman's got to you know get out of gotham city and go to all these exotic locations you know it's the, the james bond thing like you want to see people in the you know in the alps and and exploring pyramids and, and all that good stuff like I, I i like all that stuff so i would love to see stories like that all that makes me think of is the couple episodes of digimon where they had the world tour arc there you go yeah, let's all do that. Sailor Scouts versus the Avengers. How fast would the Scouts kick ass? Oh, super fast. You th- you really think the Scouts could beat the Avengers? I mean, look, look, I know I know you can't I know you can't say it, Jordan. <laughs> I'm still freelance. <laughs> well, I'm wondering in what instance that they would be fighting each other because I mean, the Avengers obviously have a lot of murky morals, but the Sailor <laughs> Scouts are all about like evil, like crushing evil, so are the Avengers evil? Like, what instance would they even be fighting in? I don't... Yeah, they're, they're, they would never fight. You're right. Back off, Captain Ameris Lees. No, see, <laughs> that's not happening. If I mean, if the Avengers got entirely <laughs> dark crystalled and became monster version of the Avengers, sure. Oh, what would they turn into? <laughs> oh my god, I want to watch this episode. <laughs> well, like, Captain would America would be... turn into, like, a bigger Hulk? Oh, sure, yeah. Or he, Or they go the other way, and he turns into, like, you know... Science monster. We've already seen one of those. That's We've true. already seen uh with, with the the flask. Captain America would be like Flagman, like a flag monster, right? You don't think he'd be like he'd be like like a shield monster? Too easy. No oh, shield monster. No, I love shield monster. That'd be great. <laughs> Captain America's almost a Sailor Moon villain already because he's got what? like a weird shield. He's wearing armor and he has tiny little wings on his head <laughs> and scales and pirate boots. That's true. Um, like it, when you really think about it, in that case, the Sailor Scouts would win because they would, you know, refresh them all. But look, there's going to be there's going to be a moment where like Captain America turns to Iron Man and goes, are, are we about to fight <laughs> five 14 year old girls? <laughs> and in that moment of hesitation, there is the victory. For the Scouts Cap uh, gets clawed in the face by Luna and then it all just falls apart from there. But what if Wolverine's on the team? Then he just kills them immediately. Oh, well, then Wolverine would be like. Like, oh, great. I get to be a mentor again. Oh, yeah, that's like, true. This is this is my whole thing. Hey, girls, let me let me teach you some life lessons. And they're Japanese. <laughs> he could speak to them in Japanese and everything. It'd, it'd be great. Look, so somebody make that comic and let me draw it. <laughs> oh, 
Listen. Uh, somebody commissioned that 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 art from her. There you go. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> Last somebody question. Somebody pay me to do that. There you go. Last question. Memoru's always negging Yusagi. Got her drunk, then made out with her. He's totally a pickup artist, right? Yeah, he's a scumbag. He didn't get her drunk. Oh no! This is a this is a thing that we actually didn't talk to to Aaron about. This is you know we talked about your favorite scout. We talked about how you're on Mars. What is your opinion of Memoru? What do you think about Tuxedo Mask? I have like not a lot of opinion about him. I mean, even watching when I was watching it when I was younger, I had absolutely zero interest in dudes. So he didn't even register on my scale of like being you know thinking he was cute or anything. So. He was just another character. And then watching it as an adult, I'm like, well, he's not great. He doesn't get like a character that I could see at all as a redeeming person until like S. Because in R, he has that whole arc where he's like, oh, man, I had this terrible dream where my future self said I can't love you. So got to break up with you for 30 episodes. Yeah, it's pretty lame. That's just really weird. And yeah, so until S, I don't feel like there's actually a point where I'm like, oh, okay, you're kind of cool. Because he has the whole episode S, I think, where... He like talks to Amy and or Ami and they talk about um her future and how like there's more to her than just her studying. I don't know. He's good in S and then kind of further on, but it takes a while for me to warm up to him. I know you said that was our last question. I do want to read this one that we just got, which oh, is going? why on earth does Artemis ask why on earth does Artemis act when he seems so lacking in butt delivered relics? <laughs> and that is a good that is a good question. That this, this show never answers. This episode, uh, actually, especially the deke dub of the episode we're about to watch, features something kind of related to that, which is, uh, did you, you, you watched probably just the, 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 the new versions, right? You didn't watch the old one? Yes, I did not watch the deke version of this one. In the deke version of this one, they keep talking about information that came from Central. And I was like, yeah, what? <laughs> Artemis was Central. That was a bullshit. Remember, we, we revealed that. But Lena keeps going. Was it? Central says there's a way to get to the thing from here. What? What? Why? I think it might be in the manga that Central is like the computer version of Queen Serenity. What? I like I don't know where I picked that up. That might be in the manga. That might be something that came to me in a dream. <laughs> i'll believe that it sounds like it could be but it's been too long since i've read the manga i'll have to go pick it off the shelf when we're done with this (laughs) yeah i still have the classic like tokyo pop floppy mangas oh wow i'm a cool person (laughs) listen by by this show's standards very cool Um, Uh, so let's go ahead and and get into it like i said we're watching usagi's awakening a message from the distant past no summary uh you can no summer because look, it's it's done. Everybody, I can't. I hear when she sucks. He can't. Know she's <laughs> right, no, he can't her blood type self. He can't let it go. He can't she's stop. From she's from the moon. She's the moon princess. Uh, she's you're spoiling the episode now. No, I'm not spoiling I'm that joking. she's the moon I'm princess. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We open outside a crepery. You know, for all your crepe needs. What the? It is the cafe crepe. Which is a which is a terrible name for a cafe. There is a an <laughs> This is how the show opens. This is what has me so screwed up here. Sailor Venus just goes, Hey, we found the entrance to the Moon Kingdom. And I'm like, I'm sorry, that should be some that's <laughs> I'm sorry, can we go back? <laughs> can we see that? That is a very important thing that we should have seen. <laughs> that you found the entrance to the Moon Kingdom and that it's in a crepe shop. Yeah, because it just opens with Luna telling her, right? No, it, yeah, she like runs up. Yeah, we Luna runs up and then uh, wakes up Usagi while she's sleeping in her blanket with the bunnies and, and moons. She's having a dream about Tuxedo Mask. Luna comes in with glowing eyes and says, hey, wake up. Sailor Jupiter and Sailor Venus, they found the entrance to the Dark Kingdom. Now, this is something that they were doing a couple episodes ago. You may right, remember. Right, right. Where uh, Usagi insisted on checking out all the, was it the pork bun shops? Dumpling shops. Dumpling shops, yeah. So they were on the right track. It's literally in the back room of a dessert restaurant. This is so weird right off the bat. Right, because that was when Venus checked every bathhouse. Yes, Venus checked every bathhouse, Usagi checked the dumpling shop, and it turned out to be in Cafe Crepe. <sighs> so <laughs> I don't I don't even I don't even know what to do with this information. Why does we it are... even exist? Well, they gotta get in somewhere. No, they don't. No, they all no, teleport. They, they've been showing their whole portals, yeah. Well, okay. The, I have mentioned before that there's a scene in the manga where we see Queen Beryl discovering the Dark Kingdom, right? 
And that led to my question over whether Beryl was a human who was turned into a monster or whether Beryl was a monster that had been reborn. And clearly in this episode, we're going to see that Beryl was around in the, the Silver Millennium. Right. So she was at, she is either reborn in human form and became Queen Beryl or has just been around all this time. Uh, but there's a scene where you see somebody, you know, there's kind of a silhouette picture of someone kind of looking down in a cave. And it's like, yeah, that's when Queen Beryl discovered the entrance to the Dark Kingdom. So presumably Queen Beryl is either wearing safari gear while she is in the back room of a crepe restaurant <laughs> or she discovered the entrance of the Dark Kingdom and was then like, hey, can you build a bakery <laughs> up there? Make sure they got that hazelnut that I like. Maybe she just is cool and wears cool outfits like that. She works at the crepe shop. It would be like, I wish we would have seen. I wish we would have seen Queen Barrel like behind the counter at the crepe shop. Fanfic. Like, crepe. Oh, please do. Please do. <laughs> the fan fiction we have inspired has been delightful. So please, Queen Barrel opens a crepery is our next one. <laughs> so. Uh, for some reason, the cats are just like, we're going to just run off in our own direction. That's a cool idea. Yeah, why not? Why not? Well, you'll find out why not. <laughs> you know why? I don't know. And the, and the scouts are just like, all right, let's uh, go this way then. And they run. And uh, all of a sudden, some weird energy appears. Energy. Oh, uh, you know what? Speaking of saying the word energy in Japanese, because they don't say the word energy in Japanese, they just say it in English all the time. I read a bit, a bit of trivia about this episode. I, I wonder if it's the, the thing I have written down for a future scene, but please go ahead. Well, no, probably not, because I don't know why you'd have it for a future scene. It is the first episode of a new voice for Usagi. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, there's a new voice actress on the Japanese version of the show. Wow, how how long does she stay on? Until episode 50 of Sailor Moon R. Wow. I so, thought it was the same voice actor for her all the way through. Not that I can see. <laughs> who's the who's the actress who came back for Crystal? Exactly. That was the confusion. Or that's my confusion, I guess. Well, the it says this uh, the woman who who did it here is K Araki. K K A E A R A K I. Yeah, she was a uh, she stood in for the original person, which was Kotono Mitsu. Yeah, Mitsu Kotono Mitsuishi yeah. is the actress who comes back for for Crystal. Well, mm -hmm. she must have uh, been out for a bunch of episodes, and uh, this new actress uh, stood in for her. Wow, that's that is very interesting. I didn't notice because I watched this with the new dub. It's only it's only, only like eight. six episodes that she did apparently. So it's wow, and I was watching it in Japanese, and it did not register at all. So, good oh, job, so, person. So she stays on from episode forty four to episode. 50 yeah. not for 50 episodes of sailor moon r i no. thought that's what you meant no i'm sorry i was about to say like that's a real long run no no six episodes okay interesting, interesting. and then apparently yeah. she also does the voice of chibiusa when chibiusa shows up uh, oh well <laughs> anyway so welcome to the show so they get some weird uh energy and it turns out to be kunzai who's like hey I'm going to send y'all to the multidimensional chaos world, which is amazing. Wait, okay. I wait. like that that's an act the actual. So good. That's what happens. So Kiri, I'm sorry. He like sends her them to like trip out lane land. Yeah. He says, I'm going to send you to a very fun place. And then he's like, yeah, it's called the multidimensional chaos world. And then that is when he sends them in. And he's like, yeah, it, it could take you anywhere. It could take you anywhere in time and space. And purely by coincidence <laughs> so lame <laughs> i was i i forgot that he said that so i was confused i was sitting there going why do they all trip out for no reason and i guess that's why oh yeah, that's right he's going go you might you might show says, you might encounter dinosaurs yeah yeah it might be prehistoric africa where dinosaurs live or it might be it europe be during europe. the time of it's island war. war and uh, isagi cries about it uh because he says i would i don't want to be sent to a crazy world like that they're kind of like showing, I don't know, they kind of have like the moonstick really involved in it. So maybe the moonstick like had some influence on it. I'm trying to give this show more sense than it deserves, probably. But oh, the moonstick, I will go with the moonstick has some influence because the moonstick kicks some ass for a second here. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's like doing stuff. Sailor Moon, like most superhero stories, is fueled entirely by coincidence. So mm, I guess. So, because because yeah. he so he blasts them into this thing, or he blasts them with this thing, or whatever, however you want to express. Please it. use its please use its proper name. Oh God! He the blasts them into the multi-dimensional chaos world. Right. It hits all the scouts. They all 
fall slash fly, whatever. And Usagi drops the moonstick. It flies out of her hand. He reaches to grab for it. And then the moonstick, like, slaps his hand. <laughs> the moonstick attacks him. I mean, it doesn't really, but it just spins around suddenly and very quickly and goes whack and whacks him in the hand. Right. And then you see them. You see the scouts kind of falling through the multidimensional chaos world, <laughs> which is like and then, Twilight Zone opening. Yeah. it's it, There's a big weird eye in the background. There's some clocks. So as the scouts are falling through the Twilight Zone, the uh, moonstick is also falling through the multidimensional chaos world and ends up landing on the moon what? during the time of this well i guess it's in the wreckage of the the moon kingdom of silver millennium yeah actually i always, I, I kind like of, that's just up there i kind of got the impression it was just like now-ish <laughs> it was just like yeah well, if you went up there it'd still be there well we're gonna see the thing is we're gonna get into a, a weird extended flashback in a few minutes so yeah. yeah i think that when they land it is now you saw you stand up and goes hey what is this place which is weird because she's standing on the moon in, in a sailor uniform, talking. Yeah, speaking, breathing. It's the blue area of the moon. Trademark Marvel Comics. Not trademark, yeah. I guess. Uh, copyright. <laughs> and a voice a voice says, Oh, this is what remains of Silver Millennium. The glorious land of the gods. Uh, and she's like, Oh, okay. <laughs> the part of... So, so, and so, and as you're implying, uh, there appears uh, Queen Serenity. Sailor Moon's uh, moon mother. And the weird tiny part of that... mom. Right, that's what I was going to say. That's the weird part. She's tiny for, like, I, again, I can't tell why. Like, why didn't they just She's make her big? Okay. It's really hard for her to have to come back from the dead to talk to them so she could only muster enough form for a tiny foot tall mom. Except that then she goes on to create a giant, like, hologram that envelops the entire <laughs> area. But she, okay. put it, she put all the budget into that. Okay, that's fair. This is our first glance at Queen Serenity, because when we've seen her before in flashbacks, they didn't show us her face. Right. Like, we only got to see Queen Serenity from the neck down. Like, she was Nanny from Muppet Babies <laughs> or Miss Bellum from Powerpuff Girls. Pick, pick your generation's reference, please. But now we see her, and she just looks exactly like Usagi, down to the hair. Well, it's platinum hair. Yes, she has the the platinum hair. This is Usagi's lunar mother, as the live action Sailor Moon said, which I love, unironically and genuinely. So the rest of the scouts stand up and they're like, this is really weird. And so we then go into an extended flashback that's basically going to tell us stuff that we already know. But yeah, but it it... it... It tells you stuff you already know, but it's definitely from the aspect of like, but they were so in love. <laughs> yeah, I guess you like do... you don't get how in love they were until this episode. Like, no, you don't understand. They were so in love. <sighs> I, it's very important. This is an episode where let me just tell you, the Deke episode is terrible. I don't really like this episode either way, but the Deke episode is super terrible because in the Deke episode, they made the amazing acting choice of. People on the moon talk in the fakest, most stilted voices in the world. <laughs> That's how they do it on the moon, man. So when when we see conversations between Moon Usagi and Moon Endymion, they're like, Endymion, I've been waiting for you. Yes, I love you. I'm from Earth. It is bad there. Like, it's the worst. Like, you could say what you want about their acting in general. It's 20 times worse in that episode. One thing that's interesting is that in the... I don't think it... They say it in the original Japanese, because I don't think it's in the subtitles. But in the new dub, uh, Queen Serenity refers to herself as the incarnation of Selene, the goddess of the moon. No, I think uh, I think that's in there. I think that's in there. Is that in there? Because that ties into I feel all like really, yeah. I feel like I remember it, at least. And I haven't seen the new dub of this, so. It, it, it ties into all the Endymion stuff. And, you know, it's, it's, it's all in there. <laughs> it's all in there. But it does make me wonder if... In the translation into Japanese, uh, Celine became, and, and again, I, I am not, uh, I, I do feel like I have to disclaim this, I am not trying to uh, do an offensive evaluation of Japanese pronunciation, but it is very close when you, if you say it in a Japanese accent, Celine to Serene, which would lead to Queen Serenity and Serena and all the, the English names that we have. So I wondered if there was a purposeful connection there, because it would be such a an easy pun to make in Japanese, but, it, and then 
have it not be her name in the Japanese version, but actually be her name in the English version. I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I feel like that that was the reason why she's Serena and Serenity, or I know definitely the Serena one, but I don't... Queen Serenity and Princess Serenity are definitely queen serenity at least is definitely part of the the japanese version yeah mm-hmm. so um, then but, i guess it must be just reference which to makes that. it like yeah a really easy like a really easy transition to make to her name being serena instead of usagi and then going mm-hmm. all the way on down the line to rini and everything but yeah it's it's something that kind of stuck out to me watching it this time around we see speaking of we see princess serenity mm-hmm. and we see endymion mm-hmm. in his armor show up and talk about how so many people on Earth were brainwashed by Queen Barrel. So this episode does answer a lot of questions that we have been having as we uh, go. I wrote down that they say in this episode that Queen Barrel is a wizard, <laughs> which definitely was weird. <laughs> but they say yeah, right. Queen Barrel is a wizard who's been possessed by an evil energy called Metallia. Yes. So Metallia is completely incorporeal. Then? Yeah, I mean, I would guess. So, yeah. yeah, they show her a lot of times. They show her a lot more in the manga. It's just it's like a shadowy entity with the face. I, I mean, I, they do show it a lot more. We've seen her before, and we've seen you know Beryl and and the Negaverse generals talking to Queen Metellia. But until I watched this episode, I did not know or at least remember that she had never been like a person. Yeah, like no. that she was always just incorporeal energy that had a name. Like I had always just assumed, like, oh yeah, they trapped they trapped her somewhere, and she can only get out as as energy. Like that's how she exists now. But, but apparently, that's just her deal. And not only that, they, well, they say she. Now I think they're talking about Beryl at this point, but I guess they're essentially talking about both of them because Natalia has possessed Beryl at this point. They say she preyed on the dreams of humans to extend her life. What does that mean? That means that she's taking their energy. She's like, yeah, all these people today, they're really into dreaming because they haven't invented pet stores yet. <laughs> That's what it means? Like, she's just p- preying on quote-unquote dream energy? You think that the dream part is just, like, a metaphor for energy? Well, no. I, I think, well, you know, every time there's a every time there's a battle with a, a Negaverse monster, Usagi does say, like, you know, how dare you prey on the dreams of young girls who want to be princesses or right, yeah. skiing yeah. champions mm-hmm. or whatever. I think it's, I think that's what they mean. Like, that there's nobody around to stop her from just setting up all these energy traps for people. Which is weird, because when you consider that this is thousands of years in the past, what is she doing? People like horses. What is Jedi setting up? Yeah. Well, but that also means that, yeah, so then he he is basically really speaking metaphorically. He, Endymion has come from Earth where she's, you know, yeah, she set up faulty horse rides that, you know, steal energy and like, you know... Uh, uh, butter churns or whatever. I don't. I don't know when this is supposed to be. <laughs> Faulty horse rides and but you know. I thought we were going to have to call this episode multidimensional chaos world, but I think, but I think horse rides and butter churns might take. <laughs> well, oh, thank God. Well, he's he sees all these things set up, and he's like, man, she's preying on everybody's dreams <laughs> of smooth butter and horse rides. Yes, <laughs> smooth butter and horse rides. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the Dark Kingdom, uh, Luna and Artemis are just running around in a cave. And then they come out and they're like, uh, it's real snowy here. And they automatically we know w- it's the Arctic. Because, you know, why not? Where else are you going to put your talking cats? They saw a polar bear. They didn't, but they smelled one. I don't know. <laughs> Back on the moon, there's... I, I guess it's a masquerade ball because we do see other people wearing tuxedos and masks. And this... This is where we find out that formal wear was the exact same on the moon <laughs> thousands of years ago as it is on Earth now. Because Prince Endymion is literally wearing a tuxedo and a mask. The implication here being like this night was so big and important in his life uh, that it made him. No, I don't know. I got I got nothing because I just remember I was going to say that, that that's why he dresses up in a tuxedo and a mask. But then I remembered in the new in the in the show, he magically transforms into a tuxedo and a mask. So even that doesn't quite make sense. Well, yeah, I mean, the weird thing is like, OK, look, we all know why they wear sailor uniforms and tuxedos. It's because they look cool. But it's weird that, you know, they have the sailor uniforms on 
the moon. Right. Like, like not uh, Serenity, but the rest of the Sailor Guardians. And that they also have, like, this tuxedo. Like, that's very specifically reverse engineered from what we are seeing in the present. Right. Well, yeah, what's the excuse? I mean, and there's not even, like, a, a, a BS excuse that I can think of. Like, where they go, well, the reason that all Japanese schoolgirls dress in moon uniforms is this. Like, they didn't even, they don't even do that. They just go, no. Or mooniforms, mooniforms, as we call them. Oh, God. Wow. There's so many no. titles for this episode. Uh, but butter turns, butter turns mooniforms in the multidimensional chaos world. This week on Sailor Business. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there's actually, I actually really like this sequence a lot. But wait. Uh, but wait, let's just hold on a second, because here's what's happening in the sequence. Let's go to the backstory, connecting the previous scene to this scene. He comes to okay. the moon and he goes, dude, Usagi, uh, everything's fucked. Fucking evil person has taken over the world. No one here is going to trust me. They're going to be like, he's from Earth. He's probably evil, like all the evil fucking people on Earth. I don't know what I'm going to do. And she's like, so you can't come to the dance? He's like, no, I can't come to the fucking dance. The moon, the earth is taking over. What what part of that doesn't seem like something Usagi would do? <laughs> well, what the, part the part, part taking the, sure. Uh, let's say I'm on board. The crazy part is him going, I came to the dance. I just put on a mask. I'm at the dance. I, I knew you'd be upset I wasn't at the dance. So I'm at the dance now. What? <laughs> We do get like a nice thing where he's as they're dancing, explaining her, uh, explaining the situation to her. Like, no, in the context of the previous scene, it does not really work <laughs> at all because you are exactly right. But I like, I really like the animation. Uh, I really like the the sequence of them dancing. I think it's really uh, well done. It's a really cool balance of very romantic imagery and Endymion saying, "Hey." everything's fucked <laughs> like i'm go like the earth is going to be your enemy and i am the prince of the earth people are being taken over and meanwhile you've got this very you know everything's th they're on this rainbow sparkly background with these bubbles of light hanging in the air dancing with each other like it's it's a really and this, yeah this is where we find out barrel is a wizard uh <laughs> it's a really cool way of presenting the information it just doesn't work with that that previous scene at all <laughs> at all it's gorgeous it really is gorgeous you're absolutely right yeah it, it's really beautiful i think and and i should say normally i would have sat down and read the manga so i could kind of see the source material for this because honestly i haven't read this part of the manga in a long time but this feels like a very takeuchi manga sort of scene uh where this would be how the you know all of this information would be being exchanged over these beautiful shots of people dancing in their tuxedos and beautiful gowns. So I don't know if that's just like the show doing a weird adaptation or what, because we are recording this episode a little bit earlier than we are. And I dropped the ball. I like how in the scene right after the dance, uh, when he kisses her, he like definitely wraps her up Dracula style in his cape, which is pretty funny. Look, this might be the best he's been. Yeah, listen, he's a, he's a nice guy. Oh, cut to the cats running. That gets a little confusing because the cats are running in both times at the same time, but in different places. But the cats are running because oh, multi-dimensional is... chaos cats. <laughs> yeah, well, these are the this is the, this is the image of the cats from back in time. This is not the actual cats. Um, yeah, they're running because the, the Earth is attacking. Earth is attacking the moon. Um, I love the shot of the earth attacking, by the way, because it's this this line of like dust like you would get from like an arm. Like, like, you know, we talked about Mad Max earlier, mm -hmm. like you'd get from an army moving across the desert, but in space with a giant shadow monster. behind it. Like, it's really it's pretty awesome. Well, Chris, you know it's, what to do when a giant shadow army of dust is coming from the, the earth to destroy the moon. First thing comes to your head, right? Well, I would probably go to a dance i was gonna say shoot bubbles at him <laughs> <laughs> because that's what they do <laughs> sailor mercury it's effective way to solve the problem does her obviously. bubble attack well you know what it's not gonna work this time uh she does her bubble attack fire soul gets done everything everything gets done supreme thunder venus crescent venus popping fresh croissants gets done you know what doesn't 
doesn't stop him. I'm sad. That's uh, unbelievable. I don't know. I don't know why the bubble spray didn't work. This one time, <laughs> the one time that it failed happened to be this time when it's really important. And when then all the really scouts important. get like attacked real badly, and uh, pillars are falling down all over the place. Queen Barrel is standing lots, over. Lots of panty shots. Oh yeah, this attack just in that one attack. When Metallia does her 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 ultimate attack is like Sailor Panty Expose or something. Another potential title for the episode. No, no. no. We just released we're racking, a, we're racking them up. Yeah, we all sure are. Title names. Um, we get to see. Hey, uh, we get to see a guest appearance by everybody's favorite dead generals. Yes. Uh, oh. We, we get to flashback to see Jedi Nephilim and Zoisite, uh a- along with Kunzite, and they put Kunzite as the lead one, which I'm like, come on. Kunzite sucks. Yeah, like, look, look, Kunzai's the leader. He has a cape. Obviously, Ugh, it's political. He's the guy who got there. He like he was just he's just the ass kisser. He didn't do any of the work, but he right. somehow is in charge. Right. Yeah. They used to have awesome shields apparently back in the day, and swords and and spears and stuff, but they got rid of them, I guess, at some point. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why they need those, since there's a giant shadow monster exploding the moon. That's true. That's true. But, you know, whatever whatever works for you. And again, lots of tumbling. Like, how many pillars do they have on the moon? A lot, is the answer. <laughs> all pillars. It's all pillars. <laughs> pillars were the most popular form of architectural structure on the moon. That's true. <laughs> If we have a pillar contest, surely this will reveal the moon princess. It's totally 100% true. 100%. Yeah, we see this shot of pillars falling over at least four times. <laughs> yes, we really do. Uh, and we can tell that Queen Beryl is magical because her hair is standing straight up like mm-hmm. a troll. Yeah, what the hell? That's, that's what magic is. Yeah. Uh, also, I again, we have talked before about how much I love Queen Beryl's design, but I do love when she is floating in midair and her gown is just like Morticia Adams long with the the big sweeping bottom part of it. Yeah. I really, really like it. I love Beryl's design. I'm going to be sad to see her go. What What do you mean? Oh, I'm sorry. You, <laughs> I'm sorry. You don't, you don't know that the good guys win. I'm sorry. <laughs> so Queen Beryl shows up and she's like, oh, hey, you're Princess Serenity. I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> and she goes to magic punch her, like, like to claw her in the eyes, basically. Yeah. And the only thing that can interrupt this vicious magical attack is a single throne rose. And then comes my favorite part of the episode where Queen Beryl uh, proposes to Endymion. <laughs> oh, amazing. <laughs> She asks Endymion to marry her. I mean, it's not, listen, it's not one of those classic awesome proposals that you'll tell your friends about for years. Uh, I don't know. I think, if, I think if my proposal involved the moon exploding, you would probably tell people about it. Well, everyone would probably tell people about it. You're not going to because he says no. I mean, let's face it. She's like, I blew up the moon and he still said no. She doesn't blow it what up if, anyway. She just. What if this is actually just the world's worst flash mob proposal? <laughs> like, yeah, I got all my friends, but, and, you know, they had swords and shields and magic spells. So can I ask you a question? Do you think the moon is shitty to Earth? Like. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, a couple of the villains in the later seasons are all like really pissed at the moon. So. That might be a valid thing. Like, do you think like maybe they're... the moon's just really, really shitty? Like, like again, we don't know what era this is. This was just a long time ago. So maybe like it's like everybody on Earth is living in like fucking squalor. It's like the fucking dark ages or worse. And the moon, they're up on the moon going like, oh, we've got dances and champagne and masks. And so everybody on Earth is like, fuck you, moon. Like you're fucking living high on the horse. So you think there's like a Hunger Games scenario going on? Yeah, yeah. The moon is like the capital. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I mean, look, this is thousands of years ago, and the moon seems to have full-on modern technology. Well, tuxedos. And modern dress. Yeah, and tuxedos. <laughs> they don't have technology. So, they have they have running water. I mean, so that's nice. I mean, they have talking cats. That's Well, that's not technology although in a minute they're gonna have also also i just want to point out those motherfuckers are cats on the moon oh yeah no, by you're the right. way they are not people they are cats <laughs> they are cats yeah they're cats on the moon yeah and they're on running the around moon. as cats going hi i'm a cat yeah 
we have also seen in the past uh queen barrel like queen barrel occasionally has fangs mm-hmm. but they are like out of control it's like like there is one just hanging out of her mouth in yeah. this episode. I po- yeah i paused it at a really good time and i've just got like full-on like anime snarl where it's like ah it's great you can see uh, there's a point where you can see her fang when her mouth is closed like it's just poking out over her lip yes yeah it is just poking out uh she does not have that maybe like sh- maybe she gets it knocked out at some point <laughs> so uh, so he so she's like marry me and he's like no I, i'm in love with moon girl here and and she's like that's bullshit and then he's like <laughs> beryl you obviously we should rewrite sailor Moon. yeah 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 he's like beryl you've been possessed like snap out of it you're a good person i know there's good in you i st- i sense it and no, she's like no no, <laughs> she, no. No, no, and then and then he says the best word line where he says he tells her to discard her evil heart. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, it's just kind of awesome. And she's just like, "Oh, I'll kill you instead." And she yeah. turns a giant tractor beam on them <laughs> and starts t- taking apart everything that is in the path of the beam. But uh, also even even more columns explode. Yes, more columns, more roofs and ceilings and uh, and endymion gets drawn into the sky and this is probably the best scene in the episode i think because you know i actually like the romance part but she uh and uh yusagi uh, princess serenity i should say leaps to him and she she won't let him go and she leaps to him and takes his hand and is gonna get sucked away with him again because the bad guys like anything that's good in the world they just go like fuck that and zap their hands so they can't hold hands and they both get sucked into space not holding hands <laughs> and luna cries and it's real touching luna with like a weird like weird tears yeah. like so much coming out of her tiny little cat head well, we also, in a very weird way yes well cats don't i don't think can tear up that much we also get about a, a stream of a billion tears coming out of usagi's eyes and i'm like oh this is going to tie into the fact that the silver crystal was made out of her tears no it doesn't or, I mean, yep. at least not like technically, like, I guess you could go, yeah, that's why, because she was crying that one time. But like, you don't see it. You know what I mean? Now, here's a question I have. Queen Serenity goes, I've got the crystal. I'm going to use the crystal. I'm going to fix everything. And Luna I goes. I think I know where you're going with this. To, to what Luna says. If you use the uh, silver I'm... crystal, you'll die. And I'm like. <laughs> yes. Yusaki's used it a million times and she never dies. And she uses the exact same. I want to call it a spell. She uses the same whatever you call it, activation. Escalation. <laughs> so to speak. And it doesn't Echo. die. She never dies. Now, I guess you could say she's doing a much bigger thing. Yusagi heals a single person. She's going to do stuff to a million people and st- and everything. But I also find some, I have some question about her logic here. I always got the sense that, and I think the manga more reflects this than the anime, that the crystal and the power comes from the Queen Serenity and then later Usagi themselves. So the idea is that one person is easier to heal, whereas healing everybody is pretty much just exerting everything you have and killing yourself. Okay. No, I so get you. that's always the direction I saw it in. The other. It's not as clear in the text, but, but yeah. I, I get what you're saying. That makes sense. So it's coming from her. So that way, if she's going to do all these things to, for all these people, it's going to take all of her energy. And again, Luna just goes, if you do that, you'll die. We haven't discussed what it is. So Luna just, we just have to intuit that Luna knows. She knows what's going to happen. Here's my question. What we get is, is Queen Serenity, like, pop, you know, moon healing Princess Serenity and then popping the crystal off and being like, yeah, we need to, we need to do something about this crystal. We cannot let Queen Barrel have it. And I'm like, hey, real quick question. Didn't you split that into seven rainbow crystals to trap the seven great Yoma? Yeah. Like, isn't that what you need to do with that crystal? Because nope. we've already seen that. That was a legend. <laughs> well, that's one of the plot holes of like, yeah, the plot holes of the 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 adding the crystals in there. Yeah, it's I mean, weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that the rainbow crystals are fully an invention of the the anime, which we love. Yeah, okay? because those seven episodes are basically great. Yeah, but like, yeah, just have her be like. Oh no, I'm being attacked by seven great Yoma. Right. Oh no. 
Right. Like write so write that in from off off screen. If you no, really maybe, want maybe to. we need to write we need to write a fanfic in the middle where there's a Sailor Moon reincarnation that happens in between these two and she just fights the seven rainbow monsters and then splits them off into the crystals. I mean, I think if you really want to, you could just say, look, the monsters were also attacking here. Like, we are not focusing on that, but that is happening. You just have to take that as red. And when she does this thing she does, it's all part of it. It's all, Because what it does yeah. is a lot of shit. Like, the implication is, what does it do? It puts the, everybody involved reborn on Earth. She can't, She like, normally she would have just been like, I'm going to kill all the bad guys. Dead. But because Usagi is there, and the Sailor Scouts are there, and Endymion's there, she's like, shit, I can't kill him. I'll have everybody be reincarnated a zillion years from now. And it just affects all of them. It affects the, the monsters. It affects Queen Beryl. It affects the Scouts. It affects Endymion. But the part that I, weirds me out about it is that she's like, there's going to be a war between Earth and the moon. In order to avoid that war, I'm going to get rid of the moon kingdom entirely. What? Yeah. That's, have, <laughs> that's a no weird idea. plan. This, like, the, thing, the thing is, this episode, uh, again, I didn't go back and read the manga, and I wish I had, because I feel like this episode is probably closer to the manga than anything that we've seen since Princess D, probably. Sure. But it's such a it, it doesn't work with the rest of the anime like it doesn't work which is why i think it is an episode that you and i i don't want to speak for aaron because we haven't talked about this part yet but i don't really like this episode like yeah. it's it's weird it's kind of like, i did try to go back and grab my manga and i only have like the episode or like the the issue right after what's happening here Aww. so oh i can't even go back and look but yeah i really like i really like the part of this where queen serenity says uh, this is my final wish. Live in peace and happiness. Also, when you're 14, you're going to have to fight evil rocks to the death. <laughs> so live in happiness for like a very small amount of time. I like all the shots of Queen Beryl and the generals melting, <laughs> like evaporating kind of like weirdly. It's creepy and fun. Queen Beryl. So yeah, uh, then we get all the scouts in their bubbles. And and some random moon people in their bubbles. Right, right. Because that's the thing, is all the moon people go. There's like a zillion of them. Um, again, the, the, the getting rid of the moon kingdom to save it is... is uh, this, this was my plan when, when George Bush got elected the second time. I was like, here's what we need to do. Disband the Democratic Party and just all the Democrats become Republicans and fuck up their party by just being from the other party that's basically what she just did <laughs> she was just like we're all on the moon i'm just gonna send all the moon people to be earth people and then they can't fight so the scout the sinchi the guardians all go into bubbles mm -hmm. and fly off to earth to be reborn the cats go into little metal and glass capsules like they're power-ups in a mega man game yeah she refers Yay. to it as cold sleep i'm gonna put the cats in cold sleep until they're needed okay sure they're, they're in the I like that kennel it, 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 like all the other people get reborn but, but the cats just get to go to sleep forever yep they, they get to be in the like moon kennel and <laughs> if ever queen barrel wakes up which is what happens they they get like awakened and have to deal with everything my favorite part of this is that it cuts back the scouts emerge from the multi-dimensional chaos world mm -hmm. and like the scouts stand around trying to figure this out <laughs> Like, wait, so we, wait, what just happened? <laughs> the actual dialogue is you saw it going, were we in a past world on a journey through time? <laughs> and Ray's like, yeah, I mean, that's why we're Sailor Guardians, because she's such a know-it-all. So yeah, what a, what a weird episode. Uh, now, here's the fucked up part, because when we come back to the present, what we get is... We get fucking Kunzite beating the shit out of the cats. Yes. <laughs> he is like, like fucking beating on them. They are wounded. Looks awesome, too, because it's all like he's throwing like hot pink lightning that's surrounded by like black shadows at them. It's like the best this episode looks <laughs> is when he's doing his attack. <laughs> he's torturing yeah, cats. He just beats the shit out of two cats. 
And the Sailor Scouts are like, uh, are you beating the shit out of our cats? We're going to fight you. <laughs> Uh, and he goes, how are you here? I sent you to the multidimensional chaos world. And Jupiter goes, yeah, it doesn't always work out the way you plan, <laughs> which is an amazing response. I love Makoto so much. So so they they take him on, or they start uh, he, to. He refers to them as you impudent little dress-up dolls, wow. which, is, which is a pretty sick burn. Uh, do they d- do, uh, w- do they do a uh, bubble attack? What happens, man? Oh, Matt, do, do they? Do they hit him with the ultimate attack right out of the gate? <laughs> I don't think uh, they so, do. Yeah. He tries to do more uh, hot pink lightning shadow magic. Again, it looks awesome. They always they always bring out some really good stuff in the fights with the generals. Jedi not Lysandai. <laughs> Jedi just threw airplanes at them. Remember when uh, Zoocyte was like doing that thing where the flames would yeah. jump between his hands? And that was really cool. Mm-hmm. In this, we get Kunzite like, summoning these basically glowing pink laser swords and throwing them at the scouts. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. They're almost like laser boomerangs because they fly around a lot. Uh, and they just yes. kind of, and they come back too. Yeah. And they just kind of nick at them. <laughs> they just They're kind laser of, boomerangs, yeah. they just kind of slice at the scouts dresses and stuff. <laughs> Jordan, you work on the star Wars comics. Can I pitch you on a, can I pitch you on an idea real quick? Sure. Laser boomerangs. <laughs> how, how, how do you hold them? Uh, you have to wear the right gloves. He's obviously got gloves on to handle them. Yeah, no. Jordan, don't you know about cortosis ore? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, you didn't think I knew about cortosis ore, did nope. you? You didn't think I was going to pull that one out. I didn't. I didn't. You must be a true Star Wars <laughs> fan. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> so, so, yeah, this... everybody, they put all their pens in the air, which, again, quick reminder, these are functional ballpoint pens. Yep. And you know what, more in the manga, like, they'll be writing with them and stuff, so it was always really cute. I wanted one real bad. But yeah. new power, so the, unexplained new power, hold your pens in the air, unite. and uh, it makes a force field. Right, of course. Why well, wouldn't it? Uh, right, of course. I don't know. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, although it's a weird, like, only semi-effective force field, because he still is able to throw the things, and they're still able to, like, nick around the edges of them and make all the girls fall over. But the force field is still going on. I don't know. And uh, he shreds their their uniforms. And so Yusagi says one of the greatest lines in the show. Even if you buy us the finest haute couture designs as replacements, I can't forgive you for shredding girls' clothes. And then she she walks with the most swagger I have ever seen on this show. She is like leaning so hard when she walks. It is amazing. And he gets moon punished, well, uh, which in this case is healed. Yeah, she heals. She tries to heal. And it just it reflects his boomer blade laser back at him. And it pins into his chest. It, it pins his cape to his chest, killing him. Mm-hmm. And he says he will not allow himself to be moon healed. Because instead of saying refresh, he says, you'll never make me say refresh. <laughs> you will never make me yell out refresh. But Chris, uh, something even more dramatic happens when he dies. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. No, <laughs> we have had a debate. We have had a debate on this show going back uh, twenty years, probably. I would say. <laughs> Gosh. It is the, the debate is does Kunzite actually give even half a shit about Zoicide? <laughs> I have always said no. Uh, Aaron, do you do? You, do you uh, want to weigh in on this? You, I know you weren't here for the the main discussion that we had when Zoicide died, but do you have any opinions on the matter? Oh, like the man, he like put her down to bed or him down to bed and like had like beautiful flowers. Oh man, Kinsight loves Zoicide. Here's oh, some evidence okay? here because he's dying yeah. by his I'm own sorry, weapon, man. humiliated, and he yells out, uh, Zoicide, oh, where, where, let me find it again. Guide me to the world where your soul is in limbo. Yeah. Yeah, man, come on. You don't say that to somebody you feel okay about. <laughs> Once again, Kunzite is relying on Zoicide to do all the work. Yes, that is absolutely true. Well, He's like, oh man, how am I going to get to the, the afterlife? Yeah, Jesus. where? Which way do I go? Into the light? I don't know. Which way is that? <laughs> Help me out here, Zoicide. <laughs> so, oh man, and those cats are so battered and bruised. Those poor fucking cats. They look pathetic. Yeah, they, they, got, they got hecked up pretty bad. But they've figured out that the Dark Kingdom's hideout is at point D in the Arctic Circle. I don't know what point D is, but there you are. Yeah. Uh, well, it's between points C and point E, so obviously. Ooh. 
and they have to hurry before the dark spots on the sun cover the sun. Remember that? Remember that from a couple episodes ago? Yes. Yes, I do. That's some continuity. <laughs> yeah, a lot of, like, at least one thing fits. <laughs> And then our our last shot of the episode is all the scouts standing next to each other, and they all say, I'll punish you. Which is, you know, that's that'll get you pretty hyped for the next episode. I'm hyped, I'm hyped. And that brings us to the end. Now, I know that our next two episodes, Jordan, yeah. are going to be pretty significantly cut up for the American version. Was this episode changed in any major ways? Uh, not really any big ways. It was st- It was still equally boring. Um, <laughs> no, it was, it was pretty much the same. Uh, I don't remember anything, uh, any significant changes. I, like I said, the worst voice acting in the world on the moon. But uh, other than that, pretty, pretty similar. All right. I feel like we learned a lot from this. We learned a lot about moon society. We learned a lot about, uh, moon fashion. We learned a lot about when it is and is not appropriate to buy someone the finest haute couture clothes. Uh, but do we have the official Sailor Moon says for this episode. We sure do. Queen Beryl did a terrible thing when she destroyed the moon. But if we're not careful, we could destroy our planet too, through pollution and plain old carelessness. We can be careful not to waste things, like paper and plastics. And we can recycle the paper, plastics, and bottles we do use. We can try walking or biking to school and save on our parents' gasoline. Ask your teacher what you can do. It's everyone's responsibility to keep our planet beautiful. Sailor Moon says. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So Queen Barrel literally exploded my moon castle with a giant that was green a laser. Terrible thing. <laughs> that, and that's and that's rough, you know. And it's basically the same as littering. <laughs> What's my favorite part of it was? Let's save our parents some gas. <laughs> I like that I would ask my teacher that my sure. teacher would be the most knowledgeable about pollution and not. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Oh, oh boy. Like uh, again, good lesson. Maybe not, maybe not the time, you know, maybe not the time Jordan or, or well, I guess let's talk about what we learned. <laughs> I have all screwed up from laughing so hard at that. Aaron, what did you learn from this episode? That the moon really loves columns true <laughs> that's really it yeah i mean there's not much else that we didn't already know from that episode so just columns jordan what did you learn from this episode well i want to say that i learned that you can extend your life by preying on people's dreams but i still don't understand it so <laughs> i didn't really learn that i, I did learn that barrel's a wizard <laughs> is that a life lesson sure <laughs> i learned that if you are romantically interested in someone you need to make a gesture, but it's probably better to start off small. You know, you want to maybe say, hey, can I buy you a cup of coffee? You know, maybe I would say maybe giving someone a flower is the most extreme kind of first date thing you want to do. You don't want to show up on the moon with giant lasers and blow everything up. That's going a little bit too far. And you definitely don't want to propose marriage immediately after because that's not going to work out. And can I just That's not going to work out. Can I just add from the other side like when you give someone a flower don't like throw it really hard at their hand. No, you can probably do that. That hurts though. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Make sure look if you're wearing formal wear you can probably get away with a lot. You can probably get away with a lot of flower throwing. <laughs> All right. So yeah, again, I I not a fan of this episode nah. to be honest. Nor I. Not like not super into it, you know. Yeah, it's an episode that I think definitely needs to happen because even though a lot of that was rehashing, it kind of it was a good rehashing to have right before the last two of the season. But it's not it's not really fun to watch, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's I, I mean, look, I am on record. I like the sillier episodes. I love the Monster of the Week episodes. I love the ones that kind of tweak the formula over and over. And you know, maybe I am a bad Sailor Moon fan because the Moon Kingdom stuff is kind of the least interesting stuff to me. But, you know, there's so much weirdness in this. It's almost something that I should like because of how weird it is. Because it's like, yeah, we have masquerade balls on the moon. And <laughs> yeah, like, hey, Usagi, everything's going wrong, but I'm going to try and make it to the dance. Okay. <laughs> and like Beryl just like Beryl saying that she wants to get married is is such a such a weird thing you yes. know 
Absolutely. So weird. Yeah, it's such a weird, weird way of presenting it, but not in a way that I, I really enjoy, despite the fact that I love the phrase multidimensional chaos in the world. <laughs> I, I mean, this is probably the worst episode to start with, like even worse than the... Crystal uh, Clear Destiny. Tuxedo. Yeah, Crystal Clear Destiny. It's probably even worse than that. That as episode a, a starting rules. point. That episode's great. Yeah, but like, you know, we talked to Leanne about this. Like, if it's your starting point, you're going to be lost. If this is your starting point, I feel like you're going to be confused and just never come back <laughs> yeah no this is this uh, this is not here's the thing you you're talking about you don't like the the moon kingdom stuff i mean again i love crystal clear destiny i think that's a beautiful awesome episode this episode's boring as hell the last episode we had where we learned moon kingdom stuff was way better than this one the one where where like they everything was just on fire and he just ran towards it <laughs> like we mm -hmm. got less information but it played better whereas this one is just like we got way more information but it's all like kind of like eh. yeah i it's so much of it falls flat in a weird way i think but i'm not sure how it could be done better because this is kind of you know it, in a way it's kind of information that we've we've seen before but we've never seen it presented much in depth but it also you know it doesn't match up with the rainbow crystal stuff this more than even the filler episode that we had last week which is you know a monster of the week episode that returns immediately to status quo at the end of it. Like this feels more like a holding pattern for the, the series finale than, than that did to me. Yeah. It's kind of crazy that a, a main character dies in this episode. Cause it's like, Oh, this, this matters. Yeah. Like it, you'd think that would be, you know, one of the big thing that was, that was going to happen in our next two, but you know, there you go. Aaron, do you have any final thoughts on the episode? I remember really liking it when I was younger, but it's just kind of boring now. It's sad. And with that, I think we have come to a close. This is it, folks. The next two episodes are the finale of Sailor Moon Season 1. Uh, will Beryl win? Will we be watching Queen Beryl R in three <laughs> weeks? I don't know. I'm very excited to find out. Uh, so please uh, be here for that. That's going to be exciting. I can tell you right now, Juliet Khan, who was our first guest on the show, is going to come back for that episode yay uh, so that is that is very exciting juliet was amazing on her her first appearance and we have wanted to have her back for a while but that's for next week Aaron, before we let you go can you tell everyone where they can find you on the internet i'm on eglads for everything um mostly at eglads.tumblr.com but also on twitters and instagram the whole bishabang uh you have a you know the, the hard drive two laptops uh oh, yes fundraiser going on now to get yourself some new supplies and i'm sure people can uh commission you to draw sailor moon or many other things many other like things to. yeah but um you know sailor moon is probably in the top three things you could ask me to draw so excellent excellent and we have someone else to thank yes we would like to thank jake mason who is on twitter at at jj underscore mason he is doing production for the show for us now thank you so much jake it is really awesome of you and you can also check out his other podcast that he does the morphin grid at morphingrid.tumblr.com you can find me on twitter at crackshot with a zero for an o you can find sailor business on twitter at sailor business Yes, and that's where you can send us uh, questions that we will answer on the show, as well as any Sailor Moon fan art, any Sailor Moon fan fiction that you write about, about you know, any any Jedi fanfics. We will read. Totally. Jedi. But also now, Queen Barrel working at a crepe shop. Queen Barrel's crepe shop. Queen Barrel's adventures in French pastry cooking. I, I want to read it. Uh, any weird Sailor Moon things we always love to see at Sailor Business on Twitter. 